Oh, shit. Here we go again. Just got another miner in. Uh, it's another Bitmain Ant Miner KA3. Uh, this is the 173 terahash a second uh, version. And I already have a uh, Bitmain Ant Miner KA3. So this is a Cadena ASIC Miner, right? It's an, it's an application specific integrated circuit miner at first built machine and custom computer. Ah, all that stuff, right? It's a plug and play custom computer that earns passive income mining cryptocurrency in particular. It mines the Blink 2S mining algorithm, which is Cadena. We've been working on numerous immersion deployments and in here I've decided to make this a dedicated altcoin uh, immersion deployment. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be deploying uh, Cadena ASIC miners in there and we're going to be overclocking them because basically there is just a lot of juice for this and not a lot of room for miners. Uh, so it's perfectly suited to, to get maximum utilization out of this. It's going to be best suited for overclocking. You can watch our full video review on the Bixbit systems. Uh, it, it was a very interesting uh, and, and challenging install. Uh, very different uh, for the uh, Bixbit immersion systems. I mean, you can see the electrical components behind me. I mean, it's, it's uh, master tech level stuff uh, versus what we did with like fog hashing and DCX. Uh, but this is the immersion mining shed. I'm playing the long game with stuff in here. I need to put this thing down. I'm feeling like a freaking madman with this box cutter. But the point here, all right, is that got another miner and I already have one. I have a third one on the way. Uh, this tub is technically set up only for two, but I'm gonna see if I can customize it to run three out of it. I've got fan spoofers. I got the new miner, so I'm gonna get that set up, get my pool information in there, uh, put on uh, the fan spoofers, and, and I'll show you how easy that is to do and everything. Uh, gonna finish the installation, so everything should be done. Everything should be good to go on this tub. We'll find out today, uh, but it's just a slightly different version than the six cell. Uh, so there's six miners in there, um, you know. So that's all said and done. Personally, I think this is a really exciting time because the market's picking up, cryptocurrencies are gaining momentum, but miner prices, although they are going up, are lagging big time behind cryptocurrency prices. Uh, and, it, it, and I kind of look at this as like, dude, last call, you better make sure you have the hardware you want because if things keep up this way, right, and we'll see what happens, but you know, you're not gonna be buying a miner for less than 10 grand because they're gonna be absolute cash cows. Whenever I feel like I either miss the boat or my bag isn't big enough of a cryptocurrency or whatever, uh, and it's mineable, and the best cryptocurrencies in the world are mineable, obviously, uh, I, I, I evaluate the mining landscape and I'm like, hmm, okay, um, can I still get miners at a good price? And you know, what does the tokenomics look like? And what can I do with these? And uh, you, know, you know, is that the play, right? So without talking in circles, that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, but the cryptocurrency is nearly up double uh, in the last month and it's, you know, it could 10x and still be under its old all-time high. And I know that's kind of like a very simplistic way to look at it, but as the market heats up, don't get too stuck in fundamental analysis. I mean, meme coins are once again making crypto millionaires. Shit coins. Yeah. <laughs> There's no genius in analyzing meme fundamentals other than like the community uh, and the momentum they have. It's not like the meme coin is going to change the world. Yet Dogecoin is in many different cryptocurrency conversations. And it's not because it's novel technology. So Dogecoin, <laughs> Dogecoin to the moon. Uh... <laughs> we, we can't get stuck in yesterday's mindset when today is different. I don't know if that sounds really cool or profound or vague. But alas, let's... Get to work, enough talking. You talk all day. We need to mine. Huge shout out to ASIC Marketplace because that's where I got this KA3 from. Yes, they're a channel sponsor. Yes, we're an affiliate with them. So if you use our link, it supports the channel. And we also have a code, which I'll put down in the video description below as well. But the key thing here is that I got this thing quick from them. And getting miners quick is so helpful to get a better return on them. Miners, you know, in this generation, miners, um, you know, they weigh 30 to 50 pounds. Uh, so they're not, I miss the older, smaller ones, personally. All right, these fans are about to spin up and be like, Wah! Yep, I called it.
we plugged it in. Uh, got an Ethernet cable ran to uh, the recent switch we put up, which kind of keeps our network going here around uh, the immersion shed. And then I've got an old uh, circuit here that's not in use up there behind the shelf. Uh, plugged into that. You can see here that it pops up as a new device um, in my network, right? So I'll put amp miner KA3170 173. There, I have a second. I'm just copy and pasting my mining pool information. I just punch that in real quick. Click save. That'll start the miner, and it will stop ripping the fans at full speed. All right. So once we got uh, that mining information in, uh, you saw when I was recording the fan speed ramp down, uh, and that was basically as it started working. And now it's you know performed all its checks. It knows what it wants needs to do. Read the temperatures, and this is the fan speed that it needs uh, to continue running uh, at its current temperatures. Uh, so, you know, a very quiet device for now, right? I mean, the faster, the hotter it gets, the faster it's got to uh, spin fans, the louder it is. And we can see as it starts to heat up, right now, temperature uh, is causing the fan speed to ramp up a little bit. I'm not saying it's a quiet miner, it's not. Oh, there it goes. But the point is, if you keep your miners really cool, uh, they will run significant, significantly quieter then uh, if not, you know, so far out of the box is, is, is running, it's operational. Uh, that's good enough uh, for me to go ahead and dunk it. You know, in a perfect world, I'd run it for a couple weeks and make sure it was rock solid. I'm gonna have a hard time getting something like that warrantied by Bitmain if it's soaked in immersion fluid and I send it back. Uh, so it is a gamble to order a miner and throw it right into immersion. Honestly, if you have an alternative route, I don't think it's the right decision. You should run your miner for like a month uh, before you dunk it. If you have the ability to do that. Uh, for me, I, you know, granted I do have the ability, but I'm a run a gun kind of guy. So we dunk it, baby! Get out of the way! So if you want to learn how to prep your miners for immersion and all that, watch our how to prep miners for immersion video. Uh, I'm not trying to you know, do the thing where like, oh, he's pushing me into all these videos, such a YouTube guy, whatever. Uh, but you know, it's go time and, and I can't, I'm not gonna sit here and explain everything step by step when we already have a, a dedicated video um, about that out. Uh, but what I will do is give you the gist. So you loosen this, push it in, pop the hood off, right? And we've got a really simple objective here. We need to remove the fans front and rear, unplug them from the control board, and then we need a fan spoofer. So I've got some fan spoofers right here. I recommend uh, if you need some, just go grab the fog hashing fan spoofers. I'll link them out down below. Um, and if you want to get into immersion, I'll link some systems and other videos out down below. Uh, you can check all that stuff out. It's very cool. But it's not for everybody, but it is a great, it's, it's a much better solution for some people especially if you're bold and you're playing the long game because undunking oh man that's a bad time one of my favorite tools i've gotten while I, when i work on uh, you know all these fan removals is this little tiny milwaukee cutter uh, it's sharp it's small it allows for easy precision right because i don't want to cut like these fan cables and, and ruin the fans you know kind of obviously right but these are held together with uh multiple zip ties in multiple places. You also need to re remove the power supply hood. It's held on uh, by two screws. One's almost hiding under this uh, band connection. And if you didn't watch our video with all the Ryobi tool stuff, I'm a total Milwaukee guy, but I bought the Ryobi starter set so we could have fun and test them out here. And I could just leave a spare set of tools out here instead of always having to uh, uh, run run tools back and forth from my house to the farm or whatever, you know, the, the mining farms get pretty serious uh, for us here at Bosscoin. Uh, so, you know, I just want to, you know, be, be ready, be prepared for that. You'll notice that there's uh, four, there's four connections. If you have the pinout style like this, uh, you know, this just simply slides right in. 
I'm gonna shoot a close-up for you. You can see uh, this is a close-up of exactly uh, what I'm talking about here. You can see, you know, these have uh, now been been removed. Be advised, right? You may have a four-pin connector if you've got the S19K Pros or the S21s. Uh, here's the difference. If you need some replacement parts or fans, uh, we work with Altera and all that stuff. Kovas going to save some coin. Uh, you'll also notice uh, the mining PDUs we have around the farm. Uh, those are uh, you know co-branded from in there. He distributes uh, those. Uh, great product. All right, so just line this up, and then it'll go on very easily. These are sensitive electronics. This isn't something to manhandle. If it's not really going on easy or right, take your time, redo it. Uh, so this is spoofed. This means that it, it, it tells the miner the fans are running at full speed. Everything is great. You're doing a great job, Timmy. Uh, this is critical because if you don't have firmware that disables this, you know, from the software side, which I had not dabbled with the aftermarket firmware on the K83s yet, but that is my end game. It would be a little bit better and easier um, if I was a little bit farther along and I already had it on there. I'm actually not sure if it has a software option uh, to, if you don't need fan spoofers. So I'm going to put them in here like this and go from there. Either way, that firmware that I'm thinking about using is going to be off an SD card. The firmware I'm thinking about using is going to probably be off an SD card, uh, which will be nice so I can pop it in and pop it out. And if I pop it out, I go to stock firmware and I'm still spoofed. I can still run, uh, you know, when I'm submerged in liquid. Uh, so that's my game plan. Now we've got we've got the fans spoofed. We've got the cables out. Uh, so you know, before mixing and matching different steps and whatever, I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall the power supply head, right? Uh, you know, I take my time, make sure it's in there properly, make sure I don't pinch any wires or whatever. Alright, so it's best if you can pop them off on some kind of level surface, keep them together. Alright, I got everything uh, just like this. And these are zip tied as a pair on the side. So I'll just stack them like this for now. Good enough. All right, so he, this, this guy, he's he dunk ready. All right, so um, with the two to three minor immersion tank that I'm using, uh, you know, there's a lot of different designs between the brands or whatever, but in this uh, Bixbit one, uh, there's not the miners don't have anything to sit on right and, and the fluid the cool fluids pump through those copper lines right rises and then it's going to overflow over back over here and it's going to do the friggin loop de loop uh much like this one granted i need to get this fluid level a little bit lower what's interesting is this one was designed for ant miners and it had this standoff piece uh, and it uses motherboard standoffs that's on the bottom of all these miners this one was technically designed for what's miners uh, but I'm going to deploy amp miners in it and they use the same like fan threading uh, so they have these and you just throw them in you just screw them in throw them in uh, to where the fans are mounted here just on the back side All right, so he's dunked. I'm still trying to figure out the orientation uh, that these miners should go in here. I'm gonna take a couple quick measurements. Cause you know, when I look at this, right, I'm like, I don't see why not four. I'm all about density, baby. Adding an ethernet connection, right? So another internet connection to the, um, to the two to three minor so <sighs> doing weird moves to try to move this miner around not get it wet <laughs> if it could like not rain 
uh, when I'm, you know, trying to uh, uh, work on the mining farm with electricity, uh, and then, you know, dunk miners and emergency fluid. I, I can't really be adding things that kind of mess up the mixture. Uh, I don't need anything conductive. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that, that, that'd be great. Kind of rigged up, a little quick tarp. Overall, pretty dry, except for this one spot on the side of the miner. Uh, so this is my original Ant Miner KA3. I'm gonna do the same steps you saw me do on my new one. I'm also gonna get a paper towel and uh, dry them off real quick. All right, just dunked the second KA3 in there. I forgot to record anything. It's really difficult to do this by yourself. <laughs> um, I mean, especially if you're trying to, you know, make videos and all that. And basically my plan for the third one is to just put it there on the end of, uh, you know, where it's pumping in the cool fluid and it's actually going to, I mean, it's going to definitely mess up the feng shui, but <laughs> it's going to go like uh, perpendicular to the other ones. Uh, so we're hot at the panel and I knew we were hot, but I double checked we were hot because on the meter that we installed on the side to give us, you know, real time power draw, it's lit up. And if that's lit up, the line's hot. Uh, so the breakers. Are, are, are off. So I just flipped them on. <clears throat> oh, what is that? I may not have enough fluid. It's getting pretty low. Alright, I need to shut it down. We don't have enough fluid. So I've got this nifty little aquarium pump from fog hashing, uh, spoiler, uh, don't look at that, redacted, and uh, I over, and so we overfilled the uh, Bixbit six cell miner. Um, so right now, I'm pumping fluid from the six cell into the two cell. I'm also pretty much out of immersion fluid, uh, so this is pretty critical. I know I'm also missing two spots in here. Uh, they sent me a message and they say that the fluid level should be at the top of this pump down here. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're still a good bit above that and we still need to put two more miners in here or put two more miners back and they will displace uh, more fluid. You can see that we've completely run dry uh, down here on the bottom. But we're still pumping fluid in. We still need to get more out of there. And we're just about to break over. What's also interesting is we can see how unlevel this is. The fluid's going to break on the left side uh, way before the right side. Handy pump. It's got a little uh, power break down here. And what's really freaking awesome is it uses a C13 connection. Right? So I've just got it running into a, a you know, minor power cable. And it's running into a cable over here. It's plugged into a uh, uh, you know 30 amp uh, circuit we got out here. You can see we're still pumping in here unobstructed, and when it's kind of wiggling around like that, that's a good indicator that that it is pumping. And when we come down here and we look at the uh, hose, you can see you know just a kind of general flow and disruption around it. You know as it continues to pump fluid through there. We're sucking in air on the other side. I can't tell, I don't think that we've broken over the ledge there on the left side. Oh, but we're trying. We're close. I want to make sure I don't remove too much from in here, but I mean, we're pumping a fair amount of fluid out and still have a good way to go uh, to get down to, we're supposed to be at the top of that motor. And uh, we are well beyond that. It's been completely submerged. We look back on the other side, it's still empty over there. Oh. Breaking, it's breaking right now. Cool, good. And I want to just get to like the bare minimum that this is functional because I still need to put another miner in here, another miner that I don't have. But worst case scenario, I could always just pump some fluid out with this handy dandy pump up, yeah. But the cool thing about the way that they configured the power is they had two C20s and also two C13s in there. So I'm going to take each C20 and split that circuit into two more uh, C14s, right? And, and those are those the little plugs 
that we need to plug into the miner here. We're getting better. We're getting better. And you know, to my surprise, it's it's taken a while to get that fluid level down over there. Remember, you need to be really careful with stuff like this because these companies uh, normally, like Bixbit, does not send you any kind of pump. If you overfill, I mean, you could be hand scooping. Um, originally, we had a system that was overfilled some, and I tried to you know use a water bottle. Oh my gosh, it was taking me an eternity. This will look nice once all the air gets out and you know look nice and clear like this. This was this was built to run two watts miners that could be overclocked with an additional power supply. Uh, I am going to run three amp miners uh, with this configuration. And right now we're getting a readout of uh, the coolant is at 20 Celsius. Getting close over here. We have now unearthed the top pieces of that pump but it's supposed to be in line with the top of the block not the electrical connections uh, we're probably we're probably good you know about where I want to stop for now and I'm gonna you know get 100% clarity on where that level is supposed to be uh, you know with them from their team we're still gonna need to remove some more uh, from this system and that's why I've got this bucket uh, then I'm just putting the excess fluid and I'll shut it down. I'll shut it down here and get some clarity. All right, so I'm still trying to get this all wrapped up, but pretty cool, pretty exciting. Got the miners in here, got them deployed, um, have the first initial basic level. I uh, want to make sure I don't overfill this. Uh, we got two miners in there, still need the third. That one is in transit, or so I've been told. We've got uh, the dry cooler here. The VFD says we're sitting at about 19 celsius both of these miners they're they're on they're activated they are mining and we can check our real-time power draw of the whole system right now at about 25 amps so uh this is pretty cool pretty exciting and i'm stoked to get the third one in there and you know really gets you know increased the density by you know an entire 50 percent increase uh it's interesting the way that this is designed and i i mean and there's absolutely room for four of them but with the power draw I'm looking at I don't think that's going to be feasible for me all right another day doing some troubleshooting out here but you may notice that these are running and while it may be a little toasty I'm not sure if I contaminated this somehow at some point, or if like a bunch of the thermal paste got kind of ground up and messed this up, or just needs more time to settle. But here's the other Bixby system with the same fluid. But anyway, the point, right? Uh, so this was not working yesterday. It was flashing black and red. We took the pump off. Uh, we adjusted the system pressure, we checked the filter mesh and cleaned it. Um, and the key takeaway is going to be that there was air in the system. And due to the system design and the way we installed this or whatever, uh, you know, the pump's very high, it's not self priming, right? Uh, so there was air in the system, right, and it's stuck up here. And it's kind of like, imagine like a glass half full and the water is just kind of scooting along with a bunch of air. Uh, and it just, you know, wasn't moving, you know, nearly enough uh, fluid through it, coolant through it to keep it cool. And it's doing that now. So that's good. And the dry, and the dry cooler seems to be working and functioning. It turns on at 35 Celsius on the VFD here. Uh, and then it cools to make it a couple degrees cooler than that uh, due to the temperature outside running uh, these two miners and, and they're just running you know stock firmware still uh, they're just uh, running stock power uh, but you can see that it's actually holding steady at about 34 celsius uh, so for two amp miner ka3s i am consuming about 27 amps uh, throughout this entire system uh, the dry cooler 
you know, is obviously variable speed, and we can see that it's spinning at a slow speed. This is probably like 10, 20, 25 percent uh, speed. It's pretty similar to how the 6 cell is spinning right now. I think my favorite part about these Bixbit immersion systems is going to be these VFDs. Um, it's it's very cool. It's a, it's a very interesting way to be able to you know get a, a real time temperature readout for you know close enough to the system. Uh, you know it's a piece of the system, and then you know I can get you know fan speed and uh, on the two cell. I don't like this VFD half as much uh, due to the data you get, right? Because I'm just getting the temperature readout, which is important. But up here you can see that I'm getting a temperature readout, the power draw, right? So almost two amps, and it's spinning at about 28% speed. Uh, so very, very cool. It's been a really long journey uh, in a lot of different ways with this stuff, uh, but both systems are deployed, right? We've got eight miners in here, and the way I rounded everything in, in the two miner cell, I'm actually gonna be able to squeak out that third miner. I've already even ran my ethernet for it. Uh, so, you know, it's nice that you just have a, a simple switch in there and if that ever goes bad or something, that's definitely something that I could replace. So, there it is. So, all right, another day working on the farm. Pretty exciting, pretty fun. Um, or, you know, at least busy, right, or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to get after it, right? Um, and I've been doing this for a long time, but I really got like, I'll be honest, it, it hasn't really made a difference because I've been grinding like truly hard for a very long time. Um, especially through the most recent bear market and you know well beyond that but let's just focus on what matters right now um i've been putting in the time putting in the work and i mean just mining is it, when you when you try to start scaling up it really is just you know a lot of work depending how you go about it what systems you use immersion is so cool uh but you know these big spit systems are complicated right i mean look at this plumbing fixture look at this electrical uh you know and but don't be, you know, too intimidated by immersion. There are some, you know, easier solutions. And we're still trying to gather all the data to figure out, you know, which one's performing better, why. Uh, but, you know, very cool opportunity. Um, and thankful for it out here. Uh, just to be grinding, building the Bosquin mining farm, and also working on content for the Bosquin YouTube channel. So, anyway, that, that's, all, that's all I got. Uh, very exciting, cool, happy ending to the video. We are up. We are online. Uh, money farm density is up, hash rate is up, uh, and now we just want that market to go up too, right? Uh, so I appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I mean, you watch the videos this long, like you're one of the real ones. So get after it. Uh, remember, nobody's coming to save you. Even though it's a nasty world and it gets me down sometimes, you know, what, what can you do for somebody else or some other thing? One of the most impactful things, right? You know, you adopt a dog. You know, if you're if you're the, if you're a dog guy, if you're into that, you may not be the person suited for that. But you know, you you adopt a dog. You think you're going to change their life. You think you're going to save their life. And lo and behold, they change your life and they save your life. Uh, you know, so everybody's always focused on dollar bills or hopefully more importantly things like Bitcoin. Uh, but you know, money changes the game. Yeah, but it, is, it doesn't buy happiness. Absolutely not. But you need some fun. So, alas, I continue to chase happiness and financial freedom. I'm done talking. Goodbye.